This is a smallest gift I ever found under the Christmas tree. Despite its tiny size, it's a full-fledged QRP Plus Power SWR meter. Voila. Just a little bit bigger than the matchbox. My wanted companion to my QDX transceivers and to my QCX mini transceiver primarily. Are you transmitting? What are you transmitting? What's your antenna status? Whatever. So without the power and SWR meter, this is very hard to tell in these uh, otherwise fantastic rigs. There are bigger devices like this. Very nice, uh, trusty uh, mechanical analog uh, needle needle-based uh, uh, power SWR meter measuring QRP level up to 30 watts and the QRO level up to 300 watts, but it's really big. It's twice as bigger as the QDX transceiver itself. So I needed something smaller and this smaller is this. It's made in China, but it uh, admits when you just uh, light on the, sc the tiny screen, you see the attribution that this design is based on G8GYW design. The open source design, which was developed by the British radio amateur uh, Mike, G8 Golf Yankee Whiskey. So the tiny power SWR meter comes as it is. No, so to say, user manual, no links provided to, to the user manual or to the schematic diagram or to uh, or, or a link to the firmware upgrade, uh, well, probably that's a reality. Uh, by the way, uh, I've written uh, to the seller, so he said that, that he's got in contact with the producer, and the producer said that this is uh, the, the newest firmware in it, and it's calibrated, and it's not no need, you know, for me <laughs> to have a firm access to the firmware, because this is up to date. Okay, thank you very much. It works as it, when it still it works. That's fine. I hope it is gonna work and work. I saw on AliExpress some links uh, which lead to some Alibaba's clouds where you might uh, might probably download some firmware for this uh, for this specifically uh, meter. Uh, let's take some tests on how does it work and then uh, take a look what's inside this tiny meter. On 40 meters, QDX is working and the meter is showing 4.95, sometimes up to 5 watts output, which is, which is, I think, realistic. Okay, I'm getting QSO with this special station. The meter is really tiny and it looks, looks tiny comparing to the tiny QDX digital transceiver. So, which is, that's actually what what I wanted. Now we are on 20 meter band and I'm gonna press tune. I press tune. Okay, instantly. 5 watts, 1.18 SWR. Let's jump to the 30 meter band. Push tune. 1.2 SWR, 4.7, 4.8 watts of output last band qdx digital transceiver can handle it's 80 meter band push tune 5.1 watts 1 1.3 swr there is some discrepancy from band to band but um, i think it reflects the real situation more or less I've disconnected the transceiver and the power meter from my antenna and I've connected the power meter and the QDX transceiver to my tiny SA spectrum analyzer. And the goal of my last experiment is to compare the measurements uh, showed by the power SWR meter and the power measurements displayed on the tiny SA spectrum analyzer. 
so we we need to go quickly to the menu item unit and we have to choose what's we've chosen what's and uh, now uh, we have to go quickly to the external gain menu we have here uh, 40 db uh, from the attenuator uh, we have something like it said at least in the description that this uh, power SWR meter also introduces a loss of some 0 0.125 dB. So we make, you know, combine uh, 0 0.125 plus 40 dB. All in all, we enter in the spectrum analyzer's keyboard uh, external gain like minus 40 point one two five db so now we have the uh, the spectrum analyzer set uh, to compensate for the loss of the attenuator and for the loss possible loss uh, of the power meter wsgtx program and i'm gonna push tune i'm start transmitting on 20 meter band i transmit and i see 4.46 on the meter and i see 4.34 watts on the tiny sa analyzer so basically it's the same 4.34 and 4.43 watts so the results shown by the tiny SA spectrum analyzer and the results shown by the power SWR meter, they differ a little bit, but I think it's in the margin of 5%. This meter, I might say, shows adequate results uh, for power and even more adequate results for SWR. The tiny meter copes well with the QRP levels of power applied, like 5 watts, and that's my main interest of today's experiment. But actually, it's capable of more watts to cope with. Uh, if this is a original G8 GYW design, then it's uh, uh, capable of handling at least 11, 12 watts of power applied, or it's a recommended safe level of power applied. This Chinese incarnation of GAGYW project says it's capable of handling 80, 80 watts of power applied, but, uh, well, I'm not um, gonna do this before I'm sure the internal components and parts and software is is well well suited for this task but anyway i think it's interesting to try to apply 10 to 12 watts i've got elecraft kx2 uh, which is capable of releasing uh, maximum 10 to 12 watts of power for calibration purposes uh, i have my analog needle based meter which is accurate i trust it so let's Let's check uh, the 10 watts level from the transceiver. Yeah, you see, it shows 10, 10 watts. Let's make 12 watts. That's the maximum. So, and here we see 12 watts. Now we need to connect uh, the tiny meter to Elecraft KX2 and see and check the accuracy. All right, so 12 watt level output from Elecraft KX2 on 80 meter band is displayed as 11 watts of output on tiny power meter. It means the accuracy drops. Now it's like 9% getting back to 5 watts level from Elecraft KX2 and measured by the tiny meter, we have 5.05 watts output so 50 milliwatts more than uh, than i think it is from the qrp uh, level uh, it fits uh, all all the specs of uh, five percent of accuracy the general trend is that uh, this particular power swr meter 
uh, is very well calibrated and suited measuring low power lower than 5 watts which actually that what I need and um, with the power increasing uh, we see that the accuracy is decreasing to take the meter out of its shell you only need to unscrew these four front plate screws and then it moves out gently so the pcb looks pretty nice maybe not ideally cleaned but well i've seen worse the uh, oled display is nicely integrated with the with the front panel which is made obviously from a tiny piece of pcb uh, we see also a nice tiny battery pack inside the box it's lithium ion polymer battery 450 milliamp hours capacity 3.7 volts it lasts long time normally should be enough for a long day of qrp operation somewhere somewhere outdoorsy beneath the battery we see the isp connections for the internal programming i should be cleaned there's no so to say contact sorted in on this side we see a specialized chip here which is ch340 due to this chip we have the usb port the usb c port is installed which is pretty nice to have a c port installed so and it's for data and for charging the battery it's uh, possible to connect the device through the usb port not only through the isp connectors which are hidden here and here we see the most important part i think of the of the construction it's a rf sampler based on the transformer actually two transformers one transformer and the and the second transformer both are wound on the same uh, binocular ferrite toroid very nice elegant decision uh, based on the stockton bridge david stockton the famous british ham radio operator who designed uh, this type of power and swr metering system the antenna current goes from that uh, connector to that connector passing through the transformer by the means of this transformer one transformer and the second transformer uh, the antenna current is sampled and uh, then basically uh, the uh, rf voltage is transformed into a dc voltage and then it's you know computed it looks like done very nicely the wire gouges is, is is thick enough for the higher power on the other side we see the continuation of uh, of the stockton bridge so that's the other side of the transformer the, the schematic of the stockton bridge is like this that the sampled antenna current is applied to the termination resistors two resistors in parallel on each side of each transformer and this is very important to see what re these resistors are so what i can see it's these are pretty powerful smd resistors uh, each being of uh, half a watt and uh, 100 ohms so two resistors of 100 ohms of half a watt make one resistor and the other resistor of uh, 50 ohms one watt of power each one watt uh, in the stockton bridge for the termination resistors is quite a lot this would indicate that this tiny swr power meter is capable actually to handle more than 10 watts because when you calculate them accordingly to a formula if these resistors here they are one watt so it means that the original power which comes here through port i to, to port b uh, could be like 80 or, or 90 or maybe 100 watts uh, and then the one watt resistor as a termination resistor is, is okay is enough but then we have a question and have no answer what's what else the rf voltage which is terminated uh, into these resistors uh, 
uh, is applied to the diets. So we see one diet and the other diet. Uh, I can't tell what kind of diets these are because there's no schematic diagram uh, supplied with this power meter when you buy it. I don't know what kind of diets are these diets. Are they germanium? Are they silicon? What, what are specs? Whatever. So, and after that, the most important thing is th these diodes rectify the RF uh, voltage into a DC level voltage. And then uh, here you see the, the processor, a Tamiga 328P processor here. And uh, two pins uh, somewhere here of the, of the processor are used for a AD analog to digital conversion and these are capable of handling no more than 5 volts obviously so we don't know if we you know run something like 80 watts here what kind of DC voltage we have here and there are two tiny resistors like resistive attenuator here you know to divide the the, the voltage which is here on the on, on this diode so, uh, but it's difficult to say, uh, to tell what kind of resistors are, what, what, what the rate of division. So uh, many questions unanswered in order to be sure that the voltage on the, on, on the pins of the processor uh, won't exceed 5 volts level DC if we put 80 watts through this RF sampling circuitry. Some things indicate that it probably is capable to handle more than 10 or 12 watts, but uh, I'm not sure before I've seen the schematic diagram uh, what's going on with the, with the level of voltage on the pins. I don't think I'm gonna try just you know try and see what happens because if I burn you know this uh, microprocessor. I'm not in the mood to change this tiny, tiny 8 mega processor. Wrapping up guys quickly. So this tiny SWR QRP power meter is a working device. It's pretty nicely done inside. The quality of some components show that it could be suitable for higher power, but not information enough as long as I have not seen the schematic diagram of this device. Uh, and uh, has got no access to the firmware link. So if you know this information, if you've tried to run a higher power than the just QRP, please leave your comments in the comment section. I'd appreciate that very much. So uh, with this said, thanks for watching. Uh, this uh, is my first video in the year 2023. So happy new year, everybody, independently at what time are you watching this? Maybe you watch it in the summer 2023. Anyway, uh, so then have a nice summer 2023. Uh, so I wish you prosperous uh, 2023 year, many DX and uh, peace and victory for Ukraine. This is very important for me personally. Thanks for watching again. 73, see you in my other videos. This is Linus, Lima Yankee 2. Hotel.